Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're providing an updated look at what GPUs are the best value at the moment, a sort of complement to our GPU pricing update video from a few days ago. Last time we ran one of these videos was back in April, but since then there has been a considerable amount of price movement, as GPUs have edged even closer to MSRP level pricing, and in some cases are even being sold below the MSRP. So with prices having fallen by 15 to 20%, I think an updated look at cost per frame is in order. Of course, this information will only be relevant if you are thinking of buying a GPU right now, which, depending on your position and what sort of GPU you are after, may not make the most sense. As I talked about in my pricing video, high-end products will likely be superseded with newer, faster GPUs by the end of the year, so it may not make sense to buy those cards, especially if you're fine to continue waiting. I mean, it has been over 18 months since many current-gen graphics cards launched. However, for people after something more modest, something in the mid-range of the lineup, if you're holding out for a new GPU generation, you may be waiting a while before cards in that sort of price range are released, so it makes more sense to buy now. It also may make sense to buy if you aren't interested in waiting for pricing of new GPUs to settle, because let's be honest, pricing will almost certainly be inflated to some degree at launch, and availability could be poor for several months though the recent cryptocurrency market crash will likely help significantly in terms of providing supply to real gamers in a timely fashion. Today's video will be a cost per frame analysis based on the data Steve collected for the previous iteration of this video, which does include most GPUs, but not the very latest products from AMD in their refreshed lineup, such as the 6750XT and 6650XT. However, those cards aren't worth buying anyway, so no big loss. Like with the previous video, the six games we've chosen for this comparison were picked carefully from our 50 game sample to be generally representative of how each card performs. The games are Red Dead Redemption 2 using medium settings, Rainbow Six Siege using medium settings, Far Cry 6 medium, Hitman 3 medium, Dying Light 2 medium, and finally Shadow of the Tomb Raider at the high quality preset. I'm not going to go over each game individually, but rather use average data calculated using a geo mean, which gives us a summary of the performance of each card, which we can then use for cost per frame. The reason why we are using medium quality settings is so that we can feature both entry level and high end products on the same chart. Today's entry level cards, think the RX 6500 XT, aren't exactly geared well towards gaming using high quality settings, so medium is really the limit for those cards. Meanwhile, higher tier models typically fare just fine on medium, though of course many people will choose to play using ultra. We also have some 4K data which will be most useful for high end cards. Finally, all testing was conducted using the Ryzen 7 5800X3D with DDR4-3600 CL16 memory and resizable bar is enabled, which is a setup that minimizes CPU bottlenecks as best as possible, especially when testing at 1080p. Also, please note that the pricing information discussed here was taken from our pricing update video a couple of days ago, so pricing may have moved slightly over the last few days, though in general it should be pretty accurate at this point. Let's get right into it, starting with the 1080p data. Like in April, the best value GPU for 1080p gaming in the US is the AMD Radeon RX 6600, which ends up with 7% better cost per frame than the RX 6600 XT, the second place card. The 6500 XT is sitting third, though given its low level of performance and limited feature set, really this card should be offering the best cost per frame value by a mile to compensate. While pricing has come down to sit at just $180 US, lower than its MSRP, to match the cost per frame of the 6600 it would need to be priced no more than $160, which is the current asking price for the RX 6400. Like we've been saying for a while now, pricing should have started at no more than $150 for this card and really around $100 would have been best. Also of relevance in this entry level card battle is the positioning of the RTX 3050, which at $330 is sitting between the RX 6600 and RX 6600 XT in pricing right now. However, the GeForce model costs 43% more per frame than the 6600 and 33% more than the 6600 XT, which I think is impossible to justify. The RTX 3050 really is a terrible value card despite all the improvements to pricing over the last few months. A much more appropriate comparison is to the RTX 3060 at $380 US. Back in April, this card cost 22% more per frame than the 6600 XT. Now that margin has shrunk to just 13%, which makes the 3060 a solid buy for 1080p gaming in my opinion. With that said, if you don't care about things like DLSS, which aren't that effective at 1080p, the 6600 XT would be the better choice. 
At 1440p, we can begin comparing the higher end models, although the overall positioning of each card hasn't changed much relative to the 1080p data. The RX 6600 is still the best value GPU in terms of cost per frame, but the RX 6700 XT is surprisingly close, costing just 4% more per frame. These two cards really aren't in the same product tier given the golf and performance, but it does point to the 6700 XT being a great value purchase around $500 US. Of course, some people will bring up the 6700 XT's lack of features, such as its inability to run DLSS and weaker ray tracing support than Nvidia options. I think those things are relevant here as the RTX 3060 Ti costs just 12% more per frame. It's slightly slower than the 6700 XT in rasterization performance at 1440p and also costs $30 more. In this sort of price tier, I think a lot of people would be willing to take a relatively small hit to cost per frame in order to gain access to Nvidia's features. Though the emergence of FSR 2.0 will likely weaken the value proposition of DLSS over time. I think right now, these two cards, it's quite hard to make a firm decision. Thanks to price drops on the Nvidia side, it's also now harder to make a definitive call in the higher parts of the market. Previously, AMD's higher-end cards sat comfortably below their Nvidia counterparts, but that's no longer the case. The 6800 XT and RTX 3070 now have effectively the same cost per frame value, while models right up to the RTX 3080 are within 15% of the 6800 XT. That was definitely not the case in April, where the RTX 3080 had a 23% higher cost per frame than the 6800 XT. Today that margin is just 13% in the US, and both cards have the same price. Depending on how you evaluate Nvidia's features, it may make sense to go with the RTX 3080, where previously AMD was definitely in pole position. However, if you are looking for the nearest NVIDIA card to the 6800 XT in terms of rasterization performance, that model is the RTX 3080 Ti, which is currently 37% more expensive per frame. I definitely wouldn't recommend that model or anything higher end in NVIDIA's lineup, which are poor value. But from the RTX 3080 12GB and below, I think you can make a case for choosing Team Green in the high end, given NVIDIA GPUs have become more value competitive over the last few months. At 4K, we see Nvidia's Ampere GPUs move up the charts as their performance scales better at higher resolutions than AMD. While the RX 6700 XT is now the outright leader in cost per frame, the 3060 Ti is also towards the top of the chart, costing just 8% more per frame than AMD's offering. That's a higher margin than back in April, but still close enough to consider, especially if you think Nvidia's feature set will provide you with strong value. For those that don't care about ray tracing or DLSS, you'll be happy to know the 6700 XT is the better value buy. Of more interest at this resolution are the high-end cards, particularly those delivering over 90fps on average. The best value GPU here is the RX 6800 XT, but like we saw at 1440p, GeForce products are closer this month than last we looked. The RTX 3080 is just 5% more per frame, up from 13% more in April. So with such a close battle, it's hard to overlook Nvidia here given their additional features. The battle between the similarly performing RTX 3080 Ti and RX 6900 XT has also become closer. Previously, the GeForce model was 19% more per frame, making the Radeon card the obvious buy. Now it's just 11% more per frame and a much harder decision. What hasn't changed much is that Nvidia's flagship GPUs are horrible value. The RTX 3090 and especially RTX 3090 Ti are barely faster than the RTX 3080 Ti, but cost 58% more per frame in the case of the 3090 Ti. While the large VRAM buffer is useful for some workstation apps, for gaming it's incredibly hard to justify buying anything from the 3090 series, unless you're an oil baron that owns 15 horses and a helicopter. Although the bulk of our audience is based in the US, I do think it's useful to look at data from other regions because pricing and cost per frame can vary drastically depending on the market. So let's take a look at the data from another massive hardware unboxed audience, Europe. In this case, we're still looking at the 1440p 6 game average, but we're now getting prices from Mind Factory in Germany. Though of course pricing in your country may vary, this is just one sample from Europe, we can't gather data from every retailer and we do understand there is a bit of price difference between various retailers. That said, in Europe, in Germany right now, pricing is more favourable towards AMD. Like in the US, the RX 6600 is the best value GPU on the market, but there's another four AMD cards before the first Nvidia model, including the RX 6800 XT. In most head-to-head -head battles, this makes it hard to recommend a GeForce GPU. 
The 6600, for example, is 10% slower than the RTX 3060, but costs 21% less per frame, as you're saving over 100 euros going the Radeon model. That puts the 6600 in a stronger position than in the US for the mainstream market, although in Europe the RTX 3050 appears to be better placed, but still not amazing value. Then for mid-range buyers, the RX 6700 XT is pretty similar here to the US in its position relative to the RTX 3060 Ti, with the GeForce model costing 12% more per frame. However, it becomes hard to justify anything above 500 euros relative to either of these cards. Even the RTX 3070 is 10% more per frame, a larger margin than over the Atlantic. The one exception to this is the RX 6800 XT, which at a cost per frame of under 5 euros is the clear go-to choice for buyers wanting a premium frame rate. The nearest performing cards from Nvidia begin with the RTX 3080, and that model is 28% more per frame, hard to justify even with the difference in features. It gets even worse for higher tier models like the RTX 3080 Ti, and especially the ludicrous RTX 3090 Ti. And then finally, here in Australia, taking data from PC case gear, again, lowest GPU prices for all models listed, the two Radeon RX 6600 series graphics cards take the crown in cost per frame. Nvidia GPUs are horribly uncompetitive here. The RTX 3060, for example, is similar in performance to the 6600 XT, yet costs 55% more per frame. It's impossible to justify spending that much on the GeForce card, no matter how much you talk about DLSS or other Nvidia features. In the mid-range, the RTX 3060 Ti costs 17% more per frame than the RX 6700 XT, which is probably the most favourable comparison for Nvidia, but harder to justify than in other countries where these two models sit much closer in value. This difference in value is also true for the 3080 versus 6800 XT, and like in other territories, the highest end Nvidia GPUs are impossible to recommend from a value standpoint. But generally, in Australia, you'll be paying a premium to buy a GeForce GPU, at least more of a premium than in other countries. So that's currently where cost per frame value sits for today's crop of graphics cards in several key regions. Do keep in mind that we've just been looking at a 6 game average using medium settings at several resolutions. If you want more accurate information on a particular matchup, check out some of the head-to-head -head 50 game comparisons we've made and apply the pricing data we've just been talking about. The main takeaways from this video are pretty similar to what we discussed in April. There are two groups of GPUs to be avoided if value is of any consideration. The RX 6500 XT, while not the worst card in terms of cost per frame, is a terrible product when you factor in its lack of features, limited PCIe bandwidth, and small VRAM buffer. This GPU really needs to be far and away the best GPU in cost per frame to compensate for these issues, but it's not, so avoid it. The RTX 3090 and RTX 3090 Ti should be avoided for a different reason, in that their value is the worst on the market right now by quite a margin, despite some improvements to pricing. While they aren't bad GPUs, they simply aren't worth it for gamers. As for the card that should be considered, this is going to depend on your region and also how much weight you place on a graphics card's features. There are several examples of Nvidia closing the gap in cost per frame relative to AMD cards, but still ending up roughly 10% more expensive per frame. If you're really keen on features like DLSS and ray tracing, that sort of margin is borderline justifiable, but if not, the AMD cards tend to be better value. There are some exceptions though, where Team Red is clearly the better choice, such as in Australia here, so again, it depends on the exact matchup and region. Anyway, that's it for this updated look at cost per frame, comparing Radeon and GeForce GPUs. If you do find these videos useful, then please subscribe, but also consider supporting us on Patreon and Floatplane. Coming up shortly, we will be doing our Hardware Unbox Supporter live stream with Steve and myself, so we'll have a lot of fun doing that. That is exclusive to our Patreon Floatpan members, so it's well worth signing up now to get access to that sort of thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.